Avant de commencer aujourd'hui, je voudrais dire quelques mots à propos de l'arrestation de M. Camara dans Parc Extension, dans mon comté de Papineau. C'est un cas troublant. Plusieurs questions se posent, notamment aux différentes autorités impliquées dans cette affaire. Il faut faire toute la lumière sur ce qui s'est passé. Mes pensées accompagnent M. Camara ainsi que le policier blessé. Au cours des dernières semaines, on a vu que le taux de nouveaux cas un peu partout à travers le pays continue de diminuer. C'est une bonne nouvelle, mais on ne peut pas baisser notre garde. On a des nouvelles variantes un peu partout dans le monde et qui commencent à être présentes au Canada. Il faut continuer de faire tout ce qu'on peut pour se protéger et pour protéger nos voisins et nos amis. On a encore du travail à faire. Alors que plusieurs provinces s'apprêtent à assouplir certaines de leurs mesures sanitaires, je veux faire le point aujourd'hui sur les différents fronts de notre lutte contre la COVID-19. Commençons d'abord par parler des vaccins. We all want to be done with this pandemic as soon as possible. And that's exactly why we're focused on vaccines. The temporary shipment delays that many countries are facing right now are a hurdle, but they're one that we were ready for. We knew that short-term delays would be a possibility, so we planned accordingly. But I hear it from all Canadians right now. People are worried. People are tired of this pandemic. They want to know when this winter is going to be over. They want to know when they can go back to you know, everything they've done before. They want to know mostly when their grandparents are going to be safe, when the vaccines are going to come. That's why there's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of noise going on right now. That's why I want to reassure Canadians that we are on track. And in late November, uh, we stood before Canadians and we uh, said that we were uh, confident that we were going to get six million doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine by Q1 of 2021. That's the first three months of 2021, January, February, and March. We are very much on track to getting those six million doses of Pfizer and Moderna by the end of March, as we predicted in November. I speak almost every week with the CEOs of these vaccine companies, and they have assured me that they will meet their obligations, their contractual obligations, to deliver six million doses to Canadians by the end of March, which means we are still very much on track for 20 million doses in the spring from Pfizer and Moderna, with more vaccine companies in the process of approval right now, and we will get everyone vaccinated by September. Now, a friend of mine actually shared me uh, the story of how they felt uh, a few days ago when their elderly parents in a long-term care home here in Ottawa got their second dose of the vaccine. He said it was a surprise just how much of a relief it was to suddenly not be afraid for your loved ones. That's a feeling that thousands upon thousands of Canadians are getting right across the country, but we need to get to millions. I know how tired we all are. I know how anxious we are to see our loved ones safe, to see life returning to normal. We feel it too. That's why we are working every single day to make sure that as many vaccines as possible come into Canada as quickly as possible. And yes, the turbulence week over week that we're seeing is uh, of concern, and we're watching it closely and we're staying on it. But let me reassure people, we are still very much on track, as promised, to get those six million doses by the end of March, because that's what the vaccine company uh, CEOs keep telling me. And I'm happy to reassure Canadians on that. We are focused on keeping you and your family safe every step of the way. 
Our team is in constant contact with the top people involved, as well as with our counterparts in Europe. Over the past weeks, I've personally spoken with the CEOs of Pfizer and Moderna, and this week I was on the phone with Pascal Soriot from AstraZeneca. They assured me that they will fulfill all their commitments to Canada. We've worked around the clock to negotiate one of the world's most diverse vaccine portfolio. That's how we have assured more potential doses per person than any other country. In addition to Pfizer and Moderna, three other companies have submitted their vaccines for review by Health Canada, AstraZeneca, Janssen and Novavax. This review process is independent and has the very highest standards to make sure that every vaccine approved in Canada is both safe and effective. On vaccines, I also want to say a few words about COVAX, which is another important part of our overall plan. When wealthier countries invest in COVAX, half of that funding is for doses at home, and the other half is to buy doses for low- and middle-income countries. In other words, our contribution was always intended to access vaccine doses for Canadians as well as to support lower-income countries. Through COVAX, pending Health Canada approval, we will receive at least 1.9 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine before the end of June. That's in addition to the 20 million doses we've already secured from AstraZeneca. Canada is committed to making sure that the rest of the world doesn't get left behind when it comes to vaccination. That's why uh, we are one of the world's top donors to COVAX. To beat this virus anywhere, we have to beat it everywhere. In addition to COVAX, we've also contributed to other programs specifically designed to help lower-income countries get access to vaccines. Hier, on a eu notre 26 e rencontre des premiers ministres des provinces et des territoires. On a bien sûr parlé de vaccins. Pour ce qui est du vaccin de Pfizer, le nombre de doses livrées par semaine va augmenter à la mi-février. Mi en comptant Pfizer et Moderna ensemble, on va recevoir au total les 6 millions de doses d'ici la fin mars, comme on le dit aux Canadiens, depuis la fin novembre. On se prépare aussi pour la phase accélération qui va débuter en avril comme prévu. Au printemps, on prévoit recevoir 20 millions de doses des deux vaccins déjà autorisés. Ce nombre va être ajusté à la hausse au fur et à mesure qu'on ajoutera d'autres candidats vaccins présentement à l'étude par Santé Canada. Malgré les enjeux temporaires à court terme qui touchent aussi plusieurs autres pays, notre plan reste solide et on reste ancré dans nos objectifs. Tous les Canadiens qui veulent un vaccin vont pouvoir en avoir un d'ici septembre. Last week, we also announced new measures for international travel. All international flights are now limited to four major airports, Montreal, Toronto, Calgary, and Vancouver. With the support of our airline industry, all flights to and from Mexico and the Caribbean have also been suspended until April 30th. As I told the Premiers during our 26th meeting yesterday, our government's priority has always been to protect Canadians. That's exactly what we're continuing to do. The mandatory PCR testing at the airport and the new three-day quarantine measures will be in place as soon as possible. In addition to these new rules for flying, we're also looking at ways to further strengthen our land border measures. We'll have more to announce on this soon. Pendant que les vaccins continuent d'arriver, il faut absolument se servir des autres outils à notre disposition pour freiner le virus. Le dépistage doit jouer un rôle crucial dans notre stratégie, particulièrement parce que les cas sont en train de baisser et les provinces commencent à regarder des réouvertures. Que ce soit pour les écoles, les centres de soins de longue durée ou les milieux de travail, les tests de dépistage rapide sont des moyens efficaces de prévenir les éclosions. Je continue donc d'encourager fortement les provinces et les territoires à les utiliser. 
pour la sécurité des gens et pour l'économie aussi. Il faut tous travailler ensemble pour s'assurer que la tendance des nouveaux cas continue à diminuer. Ce matin, on a appris que l'économie canadienne a perdu 213 000 emplois pendant le mois de janvier, majoritairement des emplois à temps partiel dans le secteur de la vente au détail. Depuis le début de la pandémie, notre gouvernement a agi rapidement pour soutenir directement les Canadiens, les travailleurs et les petites entreprises, que ce soit avec des programmes comme la subvention salariale, l'aide au loyer commercial ou avec des changements qu'on a apportés à l'assurance-emploi, on ne vous laisse pas tomber. Pour ceux qui ont besoin de soutien, vous pouvez vous rendre sur le site canada.ca coronavirus pour obtenir plus de détails sur nos différentes mesures d'aide. On va continuer d'être là pour vous. Si vous avez perdu votre emploi, on pense à vous et on a des moyens de vous aider. On travaille sans relâche pour fournir des vaccins le plus rapidement possible. On sait que le printemps s'en vient et les choses vont s'améliorer. Mais entre-temps, on reste là, les uns pour les autres. No matter where you live, our focus is on keeping you and your community safe. On that note, today, I can announce that we have approved a request for federal assistance for Pongasi First Nation in northern Manitoba. The Canadian Armed Forces will begin deployment as soon as possible. They'll be arriving on Saturday at the latest and will be there until February 10th. Once they're on the ground, members of the forces will be providing logistical support, transporting goods and medical supplies, and conducting wellness checks. Just as they have since the start of this crisis, our women and men in uniform are stepping up to the plate. They're doing a great job and making a real positive difference for the people who need it most. Over the last year, we've seen people across the country come together to support each other through this incredibly difficult time. After all, that's just who we are. In Canada, we just help each other out. We learn from our differences. We celebrate diversity and compassion. These Canadian values are what make us stronger as a country and as a democracy and we will always stand up to protect them. On Wednesday, Minister Blair announced that 13 new groups are now listed as terrorist entities, including ideologically motivated extremist groups like the Proud Boys. These decisions were made after thorough information gathering by Canada's security and intelligence officials, often over months and years. To be listed, a group must meet a high legal threshold. The listing can then help stop their dangerous activities and facilitate criminal investigations and prosecutions. Among other things, this means that under the law, it is now a crime to deal knowingly with the property or finances of these hateful groups. We will continue to do whatever it takes to keep Canadians safe. We will continue to fight hate and violence online and we will continue to protect our communities and our places of worship. Just last week, I spoke to my friend Rabbi Adam Shire, whose synagogue in Montreal was recently vandalized with anti-Semitic graffiti. He mentioned that enhanced security measures made possible by our security infrastructure program, as well as uh, extremely alert security guards, meant that the alleged perpetrator was caught quickly before he could do more serious damage. Violent extremism has no place in our country. We will always stand up to groups and individuals who use violence to target our fellow Canadians or to attack our democratic systems. Je terminer aujourd'hui en faisant un petit retour sur notre lutte contre la COVID-19 et plus spécifiquement sur les vaccins. Je sais qu'il y a beaucoup d'anxiété, alors je le répète, de notre côté, notre plan est en marche. Je veux rassurer les gens qui nous regardent à la maison. Je sais que vous attendez que tout, soit, tout ça soit fini le plus rapidement possible. Je sais que vous attendez votre vaccin avec impatience. Je sais que surtout vous vous, attend, vous attendez au vaccin pour vos grands-parents avec grande impatience. On travaille sans relâche à chaque jour 
pour passer à travers ensemble de cette pandémie. Depuis les débuts, on est là pour les gens, que ce soit au niveau de l'aide aux travailleurs, aux familles, aux entreprises, que ce soit avec des mesures aux frontières, que ce soit pour être là pour appuyer les provinces, incluant avec les forces armées dans les CHSLD. Et on est là pour les gens avec les vaccins. On a négocié pour plus de contrats, pour plus, que doses, plus de doses que quasiment n'importe quel autre pays. Et on est en train de livrer sur ce plan. Comme j'ai dit, au mois de novembre, on a annoncé que dans le premier trimestre de 2021, on allait recevoir 6 millions de doses de Pfizer et de Moderna. Et je parle régulièrement au, à ces deux compagnies qui nous rassurent, qui nous promettent qu'ils vont livrer ces 6 millions de doses d'ici la fin du mois prochain. On est en train d'être sur le cours nécessaire pour arriver à la fin de cette pandémie. Je comprends que euh, la turbulence qu'on est en train de vivre maintenant, euh, semaine sur semaine, peut inquiéter énormément les gens, mais je veux vous rassurer. On va être là où on doit être, où on a promis d'être à la fin du mois prochain. On va être là avec 20 millions de doses au printemps euh, de Pfizer, de Moderna. On va être là pour plus de d'autres, d'autres compagnies au fur et à mesure qui vont être approuvées. Et on va garder notre promesse d'avoir tout le monde qui le veut vacciné au Canada avant la fin du mois de septembre. On va passer à travers. On continue de travailler pour vous et avec vous. L'été et les mois à venir vont aller mieux que cet hiver présentement. Merci tout le monde. Thank you, Prime Minister. We'll start on the phone with a few questions from reporters, then turn back to the front yard for more questions. Operator. Thank you, merci. La première question est de Lina Dib, la presse canadienne. La parole est à vous. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau. Euh, J'aimerais ça que vous me précisiez euh, ce que vous avez dit euh, au sujet de Monsieur Camara. Vous dites il faudrait faire la lumière. Est-ce que vous êtes en train de demander euh, une enquête indépendante, comme l'a fait la mairesse Plante? Euh, je comprends que les autorités, dont la mairesse, euh, sont en train de faire un suivi là-dessus. Je pense que tout le monde qui a vu euh, ces histoires-là, ce qui s'est passé à M. Camara, euh, ont des questions importantes euh, auxquelles il va falloir qu'on trouve des réponses. Et j'ai confiance que les autorités en place vont mettre en place euh, les, euh, les mesures nécessaires pour euh, faire la lumière sur cette situation troublante. Um, As, uh, as we've seen, anyone who has uh, followed the story of what happened to Mr. Kamara uh, is uh, really concerned about it. Uh, that's why, uh, like the mayor of Montreal and many others, uh, I think there needs to be uh, full uh, light shone on exactly what happened there. I am confident that the uh, uh, responsible authorities will put in place uh, measures to find out exactly uh, what happened, what went wrong in this troubling situation. Uh, it's something that we all want to see. Euh, en suivi, je vous demanderais, bon, vous dites les autorités en place, est-ce que vous êtes en train de parler de la police qui dit que, bon, que son enquête euh, continue? Est-ce que vous parlez d'une enquête indépendante? Parce qu'il y, y a une différence là, entre faire con confiance à, à la police montréalaise en ce moment et, et demander que quelqu'un d'autre la surveille. Et puis, est-ce que vous voyez là-dedans, parce que certaines personnes ont voulu voir dans cet incident, un autre exemple de racisme systémique. Ben, comme, comme je dis depuis le début, le racisme systémique existe dans toutes nos institutions. Et particulièrement quand on parle de nos corps policiers, ça devient extrêmement important de garder, de restaurer la confiance des citoyens dans ces institutions. Je m'attends à ce que euh, les réponses euh, soient trouvées et, et les, euh, toutes, euh, toutes les questions que les gens ont là-dessus euh, trouvent euh, des bonnes réponses et que des actions soient prises si, effectivement, euh, il y a eu des choses qui n'ont euh, pas été faites 
comme il faut. Je pense que euh, tous les citoyens, euh, dont moi, en tant que député de la, de la communauté affectée, mais aussi en tant que Canadien, euh, nous voulons avoir des réponses claires à comment ça s'est passé et on va juger euh, les autorités, les institutions selon les processus et les réponses qui parviennent à nous donner. Euh, mais je pense que euh, toutes les personnes en place sont très conscients qu'ils euh, vont devoir donner des réponses très claires et euh, très ancrées dans, dans les vrais faits pour rassurer les citoyens, pour donner les citoyens euh, une confiance euh, qu'ils doivent continuer à avoir dans nos those institutions. I think it's extremely important to recognize that systemic racism, systemic discrimination exists in all our institutions. And when it comes to uh, police services, for example, uh, that's something that uh, really requires a level of confidence by ordinary citizens in uh, the integrity, by the pro in the processes, in the work being done by those institutions to counter systemic discrimination. And that's why uh, when we call for answers as citizens, as uh, the local MP, as I am, as Canadians, we need to be confident that those answers are going to be given uh, clearly uh, and based on facts. So uh, I know the uh, responsible authorities are uh, very aware of the pressure that will be on them uh, to figure out exactly what went wrong and to fully answer the questions of friends and family and citizens uh, who are extremely worried about uh, this troubling incident. Uh, I am certainly one who will watch closely to see uh, the uh, answers given on how something like this could happen. Merci. Prochaine question. Operator. Merci. Thank you. The next question is from Ryan Tumulty of the National Post. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir. You said in your opening remarks today that uh, that Canada always expected that there would be disruptions in vaccine supply and that we had a plan for this. Um, I guess I'm wondering, is this the plan? Was this always the plan that we would potentially go through lull periods like this with, you know, just tens of thousands of doses arriving in Canada while other countries pull ahead? A year ago, there was no vaccine for this new virus that uh, was arriving and uh, ravaging all, everywhere around the world. Uh, we knew uh, that the scientific community, that uh, pharmaceutical companies, that researchers around the world would be working extremely hard to try and both discover and then mass produce uh, enough effective vaccines ultimately for uh, over 7 billion people. And that was a massive, monumental task. In Canada, uh, we determined that we would do whatever it took, as much as we could, to ensure that Canadians got the vaccines that were so necessary as quickly as possible. And even before anyone started developing or confirming that they had vaccines, we signed vaccine contracts with seven different potential vaccine manufacturers and ensured that Canadians have more doses per person, potentially, than any other country in the world. And we did that because we knew that uh, there was uncertainty around which countries, which companies, sorry, would develop the vaccines quickest, which vaccines would be most effective. And we knew that from developing a vaccine to actually mass producing millions and ultimately billions of doses of those vaccines, would be a monumental logistical and production challenge. So we made sure that we were creating all the different pathways and relationships that would ensure that Canadians got as many doses as possible, as quickly as possible. And that included also investing in domestic capacity because, as I said many months ago, Canada does not have adequate uh, or even much at all uh, local domestic capacity of producing the vaccines for COVID-19, and we needed to begin developing that, and we have. But throughout, there was an understanding that uh, there would be moments of uncertainty, there would be moments of, of, uh, of delays uh, in delivery and production challenges as these various companies scale up. 
So the plan was to make sure that we had deals with whatever country, companies landed vaccines first, but also that we weren't putting all our eggs in any one basket. And therefore, even as we are expecting uh, doses uh, in, the, in the millions from Pfizer and Moderna, who are the first companies to deliver the vaccines, we continue to speak regularly and pursue uh, through Health Canada processes approvals of other vaccines, AstraZeneca, Janssen, Novavax. We are going to continue to work every day to ensure that as many doses as possible arrive as quickly as possible for Canadians. And that work we've done is why, just like I said last November, we are confident we are going to hit our target of 6 million doses in Canada by the end of March from Pfizer and Moderna. We're going to hit uh, millions, tens of millions more in the spring. And we will have, as promised, every Canadian who wants a vaccine vaccinated by the end of September 2021. Il y a un an, on n'avait pas de vaccin contre ce virus qu'on venait de découvrir. On savait qu'on allait devoir, en tant que planète, développer des vaccins efficaces contre ce nouveau virus et ensuite produire des milliards d'exemplaires de doses de ce vaccin pour distribuer à tout le monde autour du monde. On savait que c'était un défi monumental. Et au Canada, on a décidé que, comme on le sait très bien, la diversité, c'est une force. Alors, on a signé sept différents contrats avec des producteurs potentiels de vaccins, sachant pas lequel allait être le plus efficace, lequel allait être pre en premier, lequel allait pouvoir euh, produire les millions et éventuellement les milliards de doses nécessaires. Donc, depuis les débuts, on a diversifié notre, euh, notre portfolio tout en investissant pour créer de la capacité de production ici, euh, chez nous, parce qu'on sait que ça doit être une solution plus long terme pour euh, cette pandémie ou, ou de futures pandémies. Alors, quand on a pu annoncer aux Canadiens en novembre de l'année passée que dans le premier trimestre de 2021, on allait recevoir 6 millions de doses de Pfizer et de Moderna. Je suis très content de pouvoir encore dire aujourd'hui qu'on va recevoir, selon les PDG de cette, ces compagnies, on va recevoir nos 6 millions de doses à la fin mars, à la fin du mois prochain, d'ici la fin mars, euh, à la fin du mois prochain. Mais en plus de ça, on ne se repose pas seulement sur ces deux-là, qui sont très efficaces, qui commencent à arriver. On est aussi en train de travailler avec AstraZeneca, avec Janssen, avec Novavax et d'autres compagnies pour approuver leur vaccin et faire amener des doses de ces vaccins-là le plus rapidement possible au Canada. À tous les jours, on est en train de travailler pour augmenter les nombres de doses qui vont arriver au Canada pour qu'on puisse en passer, euh, passer à travers le plus rapidement possible. Et c'est pour ça qu'on a encore confiance que notre plan fonctionne, qu'on va euh, frapper nos cibles euh, pour la fin mars et qu'on va pouvoir vacciner tout le monde qui le veut avant la fin septembre 2021. Hello, yeah, sir, I'm wondering, too, about the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, the majority of that company's production is in India, a country with which we've had tense relations at times. I I'm wondering if you're concerned about this sort of vaccine nationalism that we've seen to a degree in Europe uh, cropping up uh, when our AstraZeneca vaccines are set to be shipped from India. Um, the uh, Health Canada processes are currently underway in terms of approval of the AstraZeneca vaccine. I spoke uh, with the uh, CEO of AstraZeneca, uh, Pascal Sorio, uh, just a few days ago, uh, and he very much assured me that we are uh, on track to receiving the 20 million doses uh, committed to by, uh, by the end of, uh, of June, I believe. Uh, we're uh, going to continue to be uh, on track. We're going to continue to work uh, with partners and countries around the world to 
not just get the vaccine doses we've signed for, but look uh, to try and achieve more. Um, <clears throat> every country in the world is trying to get their citizens vaccinated as quickly as possible, but Canada uh, will continue uh, to be at the forefront, uh, both in working with vaccine companies uh, and ensuring that the great contracts we signed from the very beginning uh, will continue to be respected. One more question on the phone. Operator. Thank you, merci. La prochaine question, the next question is from Justin Ling, Freelance. Please go ahead. Good morning, Prime Minister. Um, evidently, the spending that has come out of the Government of Canada over the last year has been unprecedented. Uh, the number of contracts the Government of Canada has undertaken with uh, suppliers, uh, domestic and foreign, is extraordinary. Through that, the government has been reticent to reveal basic details about who's applied for funding, who's awarded it, and why they've gotten it. Um, do you feel like you owe a greater level of transparency to the country and to the journalists who cover your government uh, so that they may more fulsomely figure out exactly what's going on and, and how these decisions are being made? My first priority, Justin, is and always will be keeping Canadians safe and healthy and getting through this pandemic uh, by any means possible. That's been our focus from the very, very beginning. That's why we made the commitment to be there for Canadians, whatever it took, however long it takes, and we'll continue to do that. We've reached out to boost domestic production of PPE and uh, scientific uh, solutions, treatments, and vaccines. We've uh, reached out to countries around the world to ensure that we're uh, getting the supplies we need to get through this. We're continuing and continually uh, looking to make sure we're doing everything we can to get Canadians through this. Now, part of getting through this well is maintaining Canadians' confidence in their institutions, confidence in their government's ability to continue to deliver for them while we're asking them to do uh, difficult things like sacrificing their weekends and their family times and their birthdays by staying at home. But that reassurance of Canadians that we are doing everything necessary to keep them safe is at the heart of what this government is focused on. And therefore, transparency as a measure of boosting confidence continues to be extremely important for this government. But every step of the way, uh, we're always uh, trying to focus first and foremost on delivering for Canadians right now while we're in this pandemic. Follow up, Justin? Right. So, but your government has still refused to reveal details or waive confidentiality, even around some of the domestic uh, funding decisions. Uh, in normal, you know, in previous governments, journalists have had the power to use access information requests to get some of that information. You yourself had promised once upon a time to reform access to information to make it more usable for, by journalists, including in an interview with me six years ago, you promised point blank that your office would be covered, as well as your minister's offices, would be covered by access to information requests. That hasn't happened. Were you lying back then, or were you naive to the realities of governing? Justin, you, you may not have noticed, but uh, over the past couple of years, we actually made significant improvements to the access to information regime. Uh, we updated it significantly, strengthened the provisions, strengthened the powers of the uh, information commissioner, and we'll continue uh, to work and respect fully uh, the extremely important work that journalists do uh, to shine light on what government's doing, to keep Canadians informed, and indeed uh, to make sure that our democracy continues to work. I thank you for the work you're doing. I thank you uh, for the pressure you keep pushing on us because uh, we need to continue uh, looking to do better and, res and, and increase Canadians' confidence uh, in uh, our democracy. We've seen what happens. Uh, when uh, leaders don't respect the media, don't uh, believe in transparency and openness. That's why we've done more on transparency and openness than uh, previous governments have. But as you point out, there's always more we can do. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Louis Blouin de Radio-Canada. Euh, le gouvernement du Québec continue de vous blâmer, euh, de montrer Ottawa du doigt dans l'approvisionnement des vaccins. Tout à l'heure, le ministre de la Santé a dit qu'il a l'impression d'avoir une voiture neuve, mais pas d'essence dedans. Euh, vous pensez quoi de ces remarques-là? Est-ce que vous assumez une responsabilité pour les turbulences dont vous parliez tantôt? Et sinon, avez-vous l'impression d'être en train de devenir un bouc émissaire? 
Europe, je comprends que les provinces sont en train de faire face à des défis énormes, que ce soit au niveau euh, des, des fermetures, de la fatigue des citoyens, de la pression sur nos travailleurs dans nos systèmes de santé, sur le, le, les, les, les tragédies qui continuent malgré tous les efforts de tout le monde dans nos CHSLD. Euh, je comprends qu'il y a énormément de frustration partagée par, par des citoyens partout au pays. Mais comme j'ai dit depuis le début, nous sommes là pour aider les gens, pour aider les provinces. Nous sommes là pour passer à travers. On va continuer de travailler avec les provinces. Je comprends les frustrations que les gens ressentent que euh, les vaccinations n'arrivent euh, pas euh, hier. On, on voudrait que tout le monde soit vacciné d'ici une semaine ou deux. Malheureusement, la production mondiale ne permet pas euh, d'aller à ce rythme-là. Mais... On avait fait des promesses aux Canadiens. Au mois de novembre, on a promis aux provinces et à tous les Canadiens qu'on allait recevoir 6 millions de doses de Pfizer euh, et de euh, Moderna avant la fin du mois prochain. Et on est actuellement en ligne pour les recevoir. Les, les PDG des compagnies nous ont dit, on va être là, euh, vous allez euh, avoir vos 6 millions de doses. Effectivement, d'une semaine à l'autre, il y a des défis. Euh, L'usine de Pfizer en Belgique est en train de euh, faire des additions pour qu'ils puissent ajouter euh, des millions de doses à leur production, ce qui est une bonne chose, mais ça crée un délai temporairement dans la livraison de Pfizer. C'est quelque chose euh, que, qui est, est malheureux, évidemment, parce qu'on voudrait avoir le plus de doses possible, le plus rapidement possible. À chaque jour qu'il y a euh, des vaccins de moins, euh, c'est des gens qui euh, sont plus à risque parmi nos aînés. Alors oui, on fait tout ce qu'on peut pour en livrer le plus rapidement possible. Mais je peux vous dire que tout le travail qu'on est en train de faire, tout le travail qu'on a fait, pour sécuriser des contrats avec euh, énormément de différentes compagnies pour énormément de doses pour les Canadiens, continue à se faire et on va arriver au point où nous, avons, euh, nous allons recevoir des centaines de milliers de doses de vaccins à chaque semaine, des millions de doses au printemps. Et on va avoir tout le monde vacciné avant la fin septembre 2021. Hi, Prime Minister Tom Perry, CBC. You're saying that you're confident that Pfizer and Moderna will deliver these six million doses by the end of March. I'm wondering, though, if they don't, in the contracts that you've signed with these companies, are there penalties? Do they, do, are there incentives for them to deliver? Is there any recourse for Canada if they don't deliver these six million? I have had uh, direct conversations uh, with the CEOs of both Pfizer and Moderna who have repeatedly assured me that Canada will receive Uh, those doses uh, that we were promised, those six million doses, four million from Pfizer, two million from Moderna, by the end of next month. The Q1 delivery schedule was something we announced uh, in, at the end of November last year uh, for six million doses of Pfizer and Moderna, and uh, we are very much on track. Uh, those doses will uh, begin to accelerate. Uh, and come in in the hundreds of thousands uh, in the coming weeks to ensure that we hit those targets for uh, the end of March. But on top of that, even as we're moving forward on uh, Pfizer and Moderna, I'm also speaking regularly with the folks at AstraZeneca. Uh, Health Canada is working on AstraZeneca, uh, uh, Janssen and Novavax approvals. Uh, we're working to procure different vaccines uh, to come into Canada as quickly as possible, including through the COVAX facility, uh, which Canada was one of the uh, leaders of and one of the early adopters of and one of the largest investors in, to ensure that we were doing ev and continue to do everything we can to keep having Canadians backs. I mean, that's the promise I made to Canadians many, many months ago, standing here in our very first press conferences we would be there to support Canadians. We'd have your backs. Well, we, were, we did that on income supports. We did that on borders. Uh, we're doing that uh, with support for the provinces, uh, with the uh, Red Cross and the Armed Forces. We're continuing to have your back every different way, including on vaccines. We know vaccines are the way we get through this. That's why 
every day we are working and we continue to have your backs and we're going to reach our targets and we're going to get everyone vaccinated by the end of September. Prime Minister uh, Michael Lanchfield, Canadian Press. Um, you talk about having Canadians back. Um, we've seen the January jobs report this morning. Uh, you mentioned you had some comments in French we've already heard. Uh, you've talked about what you've done in the past to have Canadians back and how important that is. Uh, but what specifically can your government do in the future uh, to have Canadians back to, to help out in some way? Is it more rapid testing capacity? Is it more spending? Uh, what can you do, what more can you do to keep workers employed to help those, and especially in Ontario and Quebec, who are, have been hit so hard while they wait for vaccines and your jobs relief to kick in? What more? The January job numbers are difficult for families across the country uh, who uh, lost their jobs. Uh, we knew that uh, the further lockdowns that provinces had to take to get the numbers down, which we're seeing right across the country, the numbers are uh, heading in the right direction. But we're not at the end yet. We know we're going to have to continue to hang in there. But that's why, from the very beginning, the federal government worked hard to make those difficult decisions by the provinces a little bit easier by being there to directly support workers who were laid off because of COVID-19, first with the CERB, uh, now uh, with enhanced EI. We've continued to be there for small businesses with uh, business accounts like the SIBA uh, that gives interest-free loans uh, and uh, tremendous support so small businesses can hang in there while we wait for vaccines. We knew, we knew this winter was going to be a difficult one, that we were going to have to keep being there for each other, which is why, as far back as last September, we extended our business supports, our income supports, all the way through to the end of next summer, because we knew there would be challenging times coming up. And we're going to continue every single day to look at ways to continue to support vulnerable Canadians who are being affected by this pandemic and its many, many impacts. Because that promise to be there for Canadians is one that this federal government takes extremely seriously. But nine out of every $10, eight or nine out of every $10 spent on pandemic supports during uh, this pandemic has come from the federal government, not provincial or territorial governments. We are there to support Canadians and we will continue to be until we get through this with income supports, with vaccines, with health measures, with the supports that people need. Prime Minister Michael Couture with Global National. Since last we spoke to you, uh, Global News has reported on very serious allegations of inappropriate behaviour by former Chief of Defence Staff Jonathan Vance uh, towards female subordinates. And I wanted to know, what do you make of those allegations? Uh, first of all, uh, obviously uh, the uh, new Chief of Defence Staff, uh, Art MacDonald, has announced there will be a review uh, into uh, this specific situation. Uh, but I can say that from the very beginning, uh, this government has made it very, very clear that everyone in this country, particularly working for the government, particularly working for the Canadian Armed Forces, deserves a safe and secure work environment free from any harassment. That's why whenever allegations or reports are, are brought forward to this government, we always take every necessary step and follow the full procedures, including all the strengthened procedures that we've brought in over the past years. Just to follow up on that, multiple senior government and military sources have told Global News that they knew of the concerns about inappropriate behaviour by General Vance for years. The Privy Council Office was made aware of concerns but didn't receive, uh, they said it didn't, they didn't receive any information that could have enabled further action. Yet despite all of that, a senior government source told you and your office you were um, unaware, they told us, excuse me, that you were unaware and your office was unaware of these concerns before they were reported by us at Global News. I just wanted to know, how is it possible that this was not on your radar and do you consider it a failure that you were not informed of these allegations given that they involved someone so senior? Obviously we take uh all of these allegations or any allegations around misconduct or harassment extremely seriously, which is why we've strengthened the processes in place in government and every step of the way we follow those processes to the letter. It is extremely important uh, to move forward on ensuring a safe work environment for everyone in this country and the government will continue to do everything we need. Okay. Uh, nous prenons extrêmement sérieux 
le droit de tous les Canadiens euh, de travailler dans des milieux sécuritaires, euh, libres d'harcèlement et d'intimidation. C'est pour ça que nous avons pris des mesures importantes dans le gouvernement, dans les forces armées, pour améliorer la situation. Et c'est pour ça que quand il y a des allégations ou des préoccupations qui sont amenées à notre gouvernement, on suit toujours les étapes nécessaires et les processus qu'on a en place pour assurer qu'il y, y a des suivis. Euh, par rapport à ce cas-ci, euh, je peux souligner que euh, le chef de la Défense, euh, Art McDonald, a demandé une revue de la situation du cas en question. Conseil Prime Minister, Chris Najakoti, CTV News. Yesterday, the parliamentary secretary to the procurement minister said that Canada took the second best option by buying vaccines from countries abroad instead of making vaccines domestically. Can you tell us why all the major pharma companies rejected making vaccines in Canada? I think we all understood that the need to get vaccines uh, to get through this was uh, had to be the absolute priority for all Canadians and for our government. That's what we focused on. Uh, that's why we signed more deals with more different companies than uh, just about any other country for more doses uh, for Canadians than, than uh, any other country. Now, at the same time as we were signing deals internationally, we also made investments to stand up domestic capacity, similar to what we did with PPE, but obviously uh, the lack of uh, pharmaceutical production capacity in Canada uh, is something that uh, takes a little longer to rectify, and that's why we made investments as of last summer in uh, production facilities in Canada. But Ultimately, Canadians uh, expect to get effective vaccines as quickly as possible, and that's why uh, we cast our net extremely wide with both international contracts and domestic investments. Uh, and uh, I know everyone is looking forward to getting those uh, vaccines uh, into their arms as quickly as possible and uh, more precisely into the arms of their loved ones, uh, particularly elderly Canadians. That's what we remain focused on. From the beginning, we said we'd have Canadians' backs. That's exactly what we're doing on vaccines, on income supports, on, on the borders, uh, on support for the provinces, on everything that we're doing. We're going to get through this together. We're working every day to get more vaccines to Canada, and we're very much on track to those six million doses by the end of next month that we committed to last year and to having everyone vaccinated by September. Je sais que euh, d'autres euh, ministres vont être là pour des, des réponses euh, au, à la prochaine conférence de presse. Merci beaucoup tout le monde.